Did you know that these are balloons? Well, I'm kidding, they're condoms. Did you know what condoms and balloons have in common? Well, they are both made from rubber, latex. And did you know where rubber comes from? Well, it comes from trees. Have you ever heard about organic balloons or debates about sustainable rubber cultivation? Well, me neither up to a few years ago. And this, although 14 million hectares are covered with rubber worldwide. That's an area as big as England. Rubber grows mostly in the tropics, which is home to the bio biodiversity hotspots of our Earth. It grows in areas similar to palm oil. So what does all this have to do with me? Let me start from the beginning. I'm Linda. I'm an average young woman. I live in an urban area, like meeting people, having fun, traveling long distances. And I have a passion for Asia. I studied Southeast Asian studies and I speak Malay. Saya sangat gembira dapat bercakap di sini pada hari ini. I like very much speaking here today. So when I was looking for a purposeful job, I came across this company called Einhorn, who were looking for someone who would find sustainable latex for them. They said, they wanted to produce condoms made from sustainable latex. And they said they did not want profit maximization, but reinvesting 50% of profits into fair sustainability, with a vision of giving something back to the planet and caring for future generations. So they were looking for someone who would go to Southeast Asia for them, because most of the rubber worldwide grows in Southeast Asia. Well. That sounded like me, so here I was. When I started my job four and a half years ago, I had a lot to learn. And most of the things I had to learn were about rubber. Rubber is not just in condoms and balloons. Just look down to your feet. Your soles? Rubber. Baby's pacifier? Rubber. You travel by car, bicycle, bus. Tires made from rubber. It's a gigantic market. Rubber is everywhere. So I got my trip to Southeast Asia and I went to Malaysia and there I learned everything about rubber and how rubber is grown. For three months, I lived next to a rubber plantation and I became friends with the people working there. I improved my Malay and among many other things, I learned how to get latex out of a tree. So this is a rubber tree. How do you get latex out of it? It has to be tapped regularly, so you take a tapping knife and you remove the upper layer of the bark, like Isvaran is doing on this picture, and then the latex gets collected into a cup. So this process remains the same for most of the latex and the rubber, basically most of the rubber grown worldwide. But I wanted to understand the local realities better. I wanted to get a deeper insight into why things were done on plantations the way they were done. So this is a rubber tree plantation. Can you actually see the empty spaces between the trees? Well, once upon a time, these areas have been covered with rainforest. To get those empty spaces, glyphosate is applied. So I was wondering, glyphosate really? That was, didn't sound so well to me, but hey, wait, I was there to build relationships with the people and in relationships, you ask questions and you listen. So I asked them, why do you do this? Why is it important to you? And the people replied, well, because it makes it easier walking from tree to tree and this is how a well-managed plantation is supposed to look like. But really, glyphosate, that was nothing I would want to have near a condom or a baby's pacifier. And it can't be healthy for the people applying it on the fields or for the animals on the plantations. So I was wondering if it's just to win space, can't we cut the grass and the bushes between the trees? And by that time, we had built a trusting relationship with a plantation owner who agreed on hiring a person who would walk over the plantation to cut grass and bushes with a machine. 
Well done, no chemicals needed and a job was created. Glyphosate kills habitat of animals and I was very happy seeing insects had returned after six months. The soil softer and more moist, the water cleaner, biodiversity coming back to the plantations. Well, for a moment I was proud. I thought, yes, this is the impact I dreamt of. This is how you make the world a better place. But the story goes on. While I thought rubber cultivation without chemicals is the top, I came across, I, or I heard about those farmers in Thailand who were doing things differently, who are bringing back the forest to plantations. To me, that sounded like a fairy tale, too good to be true. So I thought, let's go there, and I took a bus over the Malaysian-Thai border to Hat Yai, and I visited the farmers. And I met them, and I thought, crazy. There was so much more to discover than just how to not use chemicals. Together with Dr. Sarah from the local university, I went to visit their fields. And I was simply amazed. They have never even thought about using glyphosate. They didn't have to. If you see this picture, this is a monoculture plantation. And this is an agroforestry plantation. What I saw in Thailand with those farmers. So again, I wanted to understand why are they doing the things they are doing and why is it important to them. So I asked them, what are those little houses for? And they said, stingless bees, which produce a delicious honey. All around us, it was humming and singing, without me being able to identify where those sounds were coming from. So they pointed out to me the different fruit trees which attract insects and birds, and also the little earthworms in the ground which make the soil softer so it can absorb water better. And they also pointed out that the different leaf falls, the falling leaves of the different trees cause faster decomposition so nutrients go back to the soil and they don't need to apply artificial fertilizers. I asked them, what other differences do you, do you see or feel next to, compared to monoculture plantation? And they highlighted it's more shade, higher humidity, cooler microclimate, which were all conditions perfect for latex. So their way of cultivation resulted in higher latex yields, which means more latex for the farmers to sell. And not because they're extracting the land to the maximum, taking out as much as they can from the soil, but because they see the earth as a system, which you need to listen to and observe. So yeah, you can extract, but you also need to focus on giving back. Regenerative agriculture is the term for this practice. So the farmers and me did the same. I listened to the farmers, the farmers listened to the earth. I was humbled. I thought rubber cultivation without chemicals was the top. And I realized I had so much more to learn. But this was the sustainable latex I had dreamt of. I wanted to have it for Einhorn. I could not e easily buy it. These were farmers, not processors. You can imagine fresh latex like raw milk. If you don't process it quickly, it turns sour and then it cannot be used for condom production anymore, except if you wanted to make cheese out of it, but cheese doesn't go so well with condoms, I guess. So, and those farmers have not been asked for their sustainable latex yet. The rubber market being gigantic, but nobody has asked for their sustainable latex yet. I couldn't imagine this, but it was the case. So I needed to find someone who would process the latex for us, a processor. So I drove around in the car for a week and I visited different latex processors in the region, pitching our idea of buying these farmers latex with a premium price. Because my initial judgment was I could only convince those processors with typical market benefit arguments. And then I met Sudita. She's a latex processor and 
She was very thrilled about the idea of giving something back to, to the nature and of working together with the farmers. So I gathered together Sudita and the farmers for a workshop and I was very nervous they would not like each other. Because by that time I had learned you can only create something new and create an impact if you build relationships, if you trust the people you're working with and if you're interested in the people you're working with. But they clicked. They clicked so well that after a couple of meetings, they created a common vision together. It's in Thai. In Thailand, we have Gaga and Michael, our local consultants who facilitated all those workshops and who helped me translating the Thai words for, for which you're reading there for me. So it says, grow trees with love. Build security and sustainability. Plant for future generations. Do you remember what I said at the beginning about Einhorn and their vision? Care for future generations and love, spread love. Maybe I didn't mention it, but I was supposed to mention it. <laughs> so these were the same thoughts we had had back in Berlin in front of our computers. So for us, it took us a long time finding sustainable latex, but with asking Thousands of questions and listening to the people, we managed to get a full new beginning of the value chain of our condoms. So today, Einhorn condoms are made from these farmers' sustainable latex. We are proud we've achieved this impact together with those farmers who are now getting a premium price paid for the great work they do. Well, what I witnessed in Thailand is still pioneering in sustainability. If you ask me, this kind of rubber cultivation has to become industry standard. Guess what we are planning next? I want to make this kind of latex available for all the other companies out there which care for our planet. Because together, and together with the team in Thailand, we are working on selling it not only to Einhorn, a small startup, but to also to other condom companies to increase the actual impact. Because true impact only works if it gets big and contagious. Only if you share your knowledge and if you create a common vision together, you can make it big. So I would like to share with you what I think is important everyone can contribute to making this world maybe a little better place. We have to understand the systems we want to change. If we judge immediately, we will not learn from and with each other. So look behind the scenes, ask questions, be curious, build trust in relationships, because the knowledge lies in the people, so ask them and listen to them. And don't be surprised if the ecosystems you're trying to change already know the answer without you telling them. And don't be surprised if the fairy tales you thought were too good to be true become reality. Thank you. <laughs>